I had always been a skeptic when it came to online dating. But after a string of failed relationships and lonely nights, I decided to give it a try. My friends had talked me into downloading Tinder, promising that it was a surefire way to meet interesting people. Little did I know that swiping right would lead me down a path of sheer terror that still haunts my every waking moment. It all began on a gloomy Tuesday evening. The sky was overcast, and the air was heavy with an impending storm. My finger swiped right on a profile that caught my attention, Sarah. Her photo showed a beautiful woman with raven black hair, piercing blue eyes, and a smile that could melt even the coldest heart. We matched almost instantly, and our conversation flowed effortlessly. Sarah seemed perfect in every way. She was witty, intelligent, and shared many of my interests. We chatted for days, and as the conversations grew deeper, so did our connection. It wasn't long before she suggested we meet in person. We decided to meet at a quaint coffee shop nestled in the heart of the city. The place was dimly lit, and the aroma of freshly brewed coffee wafted through the air. As I entered, I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. It was as if the shadows themselves were warning me of the impending horror. I spotted her sitting at the corner table, just as her photos had portrayed. She smiled as I approached, and her beauty was even more captivating in person. We exchanged pleasantries, and soon found ourselves engrossed in a conversation that seemed to flow effortlessly. Just as it had online, hours passed, and I was beginning to forget about my initial apprehension. Sarah suggested we take a walk to a nearby park. As we strolled through the park, the sky grew darker, and the wind whispered ominously through the trees. It was then that she asked if I believed in the supernatural. I chuckled nervously, thinking she was trying to spook me. Not really, I replied. I'm more of a skeptic. Her eyes gleamed with an eerie intensity. Well, I have a story that might change your mind. She began to tell me about an old abandoned house at the edge of town. It was a house that everyone in the area knew to avoid, for it was said to be cursed. Sarah claimed to have visited it once with friends, and she insisted that strange and terrifying things had happened there. As she spoke, I couldn't help but be drawn into her story. She described hearing whispers in the dark, seeing shadowy figures move about, and feeling an oppressive presence that seemed to linger long after they had left. My skepticism wavered, and I found myself intrigued. Sarah suggested we visit the house that very night, daring me to challenge my beliefs. Part of me wanted to decline, to heed the warnings of common sense, but there was an undeniable curiosity that had taken hold of me. I reluctantly agreed. The night had fallen completely by the time we arrived at the dilapidated house. It stood shrouded in darkness, like a malevolent beast waiting to pounce. Sarah led the way, her steps confident and sure, as if she had done this countless times before. As we entered the house, an unsettling chill washed over me. The air was thick with a musty odor, and the creaking floorboards beneath our feet added to the eerie atmosphere. We explored room after room, our flashlight beams revealing the decay that had consumed the place. It was in the basement that things took a turn for the worse. The air grew icy, and the oppressive feeling Sarah had mentioned earlier settled upon us like a suffocating shroud. We heard faint whispers, unintelligible and ghostly. My heart pounded, and I could feel fear clawing its way up my spine. Suddenly, Sarah's flashlight flickered and died, plunging us into darkness. Panic set in as I fumbled for my own flashlight, struggling to get it to work. When the beam of light finally pierced the blackness, what I saw sent shockwaves through my body. Sarah was no longer beside me. She had disappeared into thin air. I called out her name, my voice quivering with fear, but there was no response. I was alone in that accursed basement, surrounded by an oppressive silence, broken only by the faint, sinister whispers that seemed to come from the very walls themselves. Terrified and disoriented, I stumbled back up the basement stairs and out of the house. 
The night air was cold, and the shadows seemed to mock me. I desperately tried to call Sarah, but my phone displayed no signal. It was as if I had stepped into another realm, one where the rules of reality no longer applied. With no other option, I decided to return to the coffee shop where we had met, hoping that maybe Sarah had returned there as well. As I entered, the barista shot me a puzzled look. You're back? She asked. I thought you left with your friend. My heart sank. What do you mean? I'm alone. Sarah disappeared in that house. The barista's expression darkened. That's impossible. I saw you both leave together just a few minutes ago. I was dumbfounded. It was as if Sarah had never vanished. As if my experience in that dreadful house had been nothing but a twisted hallucination. I tried to explain, but the barista insisted that I had left with Sarah. I rushed back to the house, hoping to find some answers, but it was empty and lifeless. There was no sign of Sarah, no trace of the terror that had enveloped us in that basement. It was as if the house itself had swallowed her whole. I never saw Sarah again, and the police were unable to uncover any leads regarding her disappearance. To this day, I am haunted by the events of that night, tormented by the uncertainty of what happened in that cursed house. Was it a malevolent force that had taken her? Or had she been part of a sinister ruse all along? One thing is certain, I can never trust the online world of dating again. For beneath the veneer of charm and beauty, there are horrors that lurk, waiting to ensnare those who dare to venture into the darkness. The memory of that night, the whispers in the basement, and the enigma of Sarah's vanishing will forever haunt me. A chilling reminder that some mysteries are better left unsolved.